You're going to want to know what to do. And you're going to have to remember what it is that God said. And you have to speak God's word. And just like Jesus had to speak the word of God, of course, in the wilderness, when you and I get in certain wilderness in our lives, we're going to have to speak God's word. And so, now just think about it. Yes, we have to meditate on it, but we have to speak it. You have to put it in the devil's face because he's going to sound real convincing. As a matter of fact, he's going to use the word of God, but the only thing he's going to do is he don't believe it. He's going to twist it. Yes. And he's going to make it sound a certain way And he's going to subtract certain things from it And add certain spices to it And if you're not careful you'll mix it up Eat it and digest it yeah. Get sick, get poisoned and die In the midst of your situation yeah. So what you and I have to make sure that we do Is speak the clear Pure word of God yeah. Well Satan says This is what God said Didn't God say this? This is what I say No you say this is what God said this is what God is doing. Well, maybe you ought to try this, though. This is not what I haven't gotten my instruction from God. And listen, stand still until you get further instruction. If, listen, if God hadn't given you further instruction, don't go. That's right. Don't do anything. Amen. Well, I just want to be obedient. That's good. But listen, if God hasn't given you further instructions, don't give yourself a set of instructions. And definitely don't listen to the devil. Because he'll come up with a whole lot of them. And so if God says just to stand still, that's the word of God. Stand still. And see the salvation of the Lord. Sometimes one of the hardest parts of the process can be right when you get ready to come out. Right at the very curve of change. That's where a lot of people tend to go under. When after you fought the fight of faith in a certain situation. Listen, after you've used spiritual armor. After you've gone through certain the bulk of the process, now a lot of times the hardest thing to do can be just to wait. Yeah, wait. Hear God's word and just wait on the change to come. Because even after you've got finished with a certain bulk of the fight and the battle, it may still not be time for you to go through just yet. It might be time now for you to just to relax, stay still, rest, hear God's word, and wait. Just indulge and bask in his presence. Because, see, that's what you're going to have to know how to do anyway when you get into the blessing. Otherwise, you'll forsake it and forsake and forget about God. So now what God is doing, he's establishing that deep, intimate relationship and fellowship with you. Whereby you just wait on uh, his timing and hear his still, small voice. Satan will give you a lot of instructions. And if you're not careful, even another wave and degree of depression will set in. And how many times have I seen this happen to people? Listen, right before they get blessed. Hmm. They'll do a reflection. And sometimes you can have a post-traumatic stress happen inside of your mind whereby although you're blessed, you'll get by yourself, it'll get quiet, and then all of a sudden one day you'll just look back on everything over your life and get overwhelmed in a moment. And yes, you know the goodness of God, but yet you'll get an overwhelming sadness about where you are. Yes. Yeah. And at that point, if you're not careful, Satan will feed you a ton of lies. And so that's where you need to know what it is that God said going forward. Yeah, I know it. He'll accuse you. I know what I used to be, but I know what I am now. I know where I came from, but that ain't where I'm at right now. And it definitely, certainly is not where I'm going by the grace of God. Amen. So you give the devil the word of God, and that'll be the anchor and the thing that keeps you in your trouble, weary soul. Where are we? 
will strengthen me, yeah. Today, do you know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior? Well, that's the only way you're going to get saved. That's the only way you're going to get strength for your soul. It's through the Lord Jesus Christ and his finished work on the cross and all that he's done over 2,000 years ago. Amen. You need him today. You need him desperately because you don't know when your last day is going to be, Amen. when you're going to breathe your last breath, and you don't know when Jesus is going to come back. I don't, nobody knows, but I know this, you and I have to be ready. And the only way to be ready is to have salvation, is to have our sins forgiven. The only way to get that done is through the blood of Jesus Christ. So I want to ask you, Amen. do you know him today? Not know about somebody else's relationship with him. Uh, that's not going to be applicable to you. Your mother may know Jesus. Your father may know Jesus. Your sister, your brother, others may know Jesus. But my question is, do you know Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior? It's not going to be enough for somebody else to know Jesus as their Lord and personal Savior. And you get coverage. You're going to have to get coverage on your own. And that's going to come through repentance and having a personal relationship with him. And having your sins covered and your sins forgiven by his blood. You have to accept him into your life right now as full authority over your soul. Give him reign and rule and sovereignty over your soul right now. That means forget about your way and how you've done things and any other thing that you would think about using to gain coverage where your soul is concerned. Anything else you've tried, anything else you've been acquainted with, you need to realize that none of that matters at all. And it's not going to be enough to give you eternal life. Man. Nothing but Jesus. No one but Jesus. God in the flesh came to this earth to do what needed to be done to do what no man could do, and that is to be a sufficient, all-sufficient, substitutionary, atoning, one-time death that satisfied the wrath of God Amen. upon mankind. That was through the sacrifice, the sacrificial death of the Lamb of God, the total, absolute, complete, sufficient Lamb of God. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. You need to accept him into your life today. There's no other way. Don't try to figure out something else. It could take you the rest of your life to do that. And I would hate and you would regret to get down to the end and not make that decision, not have that coverage that you needed for your soul. And on top of that, look back at how you could have responded to an invitation just like this one and refused to do it. Mm -hmm. You may not get another chance. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll think about it. Well, how much time do you have to think about it? I guarantee you can't tell me. You can let me know presumptuously. You can say, well, next week. But I can tell you this. I'm not promised next week. And I guarantee you're not promised Amen. next week. No. So I wouldn't let it run through my mind too many times. As a matter of fact, Satan is going to give you all kinds of reasons why you shouldn't. Yes. But if you're convinced that you should, then what you need to do right here today is make it up in your heart and mind that you're going to allow Jesus to be the captain of your soul, the coverage for your soul, to do everything that's needed for your soul. you got coverage in every single area except for soul coverage. That's going to be through Jesus Christ. So if you're here, wherever you're watching from, let Jesus be the most important thing in your life right now. He's going to put everything together for you and receive him into your life. Amen. Jesus said, he who believes and is baptized shall be saved. You need to come to Jesus to get your soul right. All other kind of things might not be right. You need to get your soul right. All kind of other things might be right, so you think. But if your soul is not intact, it really doesn't matter. Amen. Get your soul right with the Lord. Or maybe you drifted away from uh, your fellowship with God. You know the Lord Jesus Christ, but yet you've been all over the place. You need to come back to your fellowship with the Lord. Uh, you, 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 you've been wayward. And uh, you've been searching for certain things. Listen, you're going to find it in Jesus. Yeah. I don't know where you've been looking or where you've gone. I can guarantee you it's not enough. And stop trying to force it. You've gotten all the juice out of this situation that you're possibly going to get. Come on back to the water the flowing living water, the river that flows from heaven's streams to your soul that you really truly need. And you'll drink of Jesus and never thirst again. Amen. Come on back Amen. to Jesus. Never mind the mess that you made or what happened. The Lord knew you were going to do it before you even did it. That's, right. that's why he set up the plan of salvation. Yeah. And, all. and that's why he can heal, he can deliver, he can clean you up and put you back together again. So I'm trying to put yourself together. I'm going to clean up before I come back. I've never seen nobody get in the shower clean. 
Amen. Amen. Get in the shower dirty. Come to Jesus just as you are. And if anybody judges you, they're not your judge. They're not your, cannot be your savior. You come to Jesus. Come past people. Come to Jesus. Amen. He's willing to accept you just as you are with a repentant mindset to come on back and he'll heal your soul again. If any one of those is you, if you're here, I want to talk to you after service. I want to see what's on your mind. Set up a time where um, we can see what it is that's going on. I want to hear all about it and see where the Holy Spirit takes us from there. Uh, if you're not here, if you're watching from wherever, or whatever the case may be, um, accept Jesus into your life right now. You can make that decision uh, within yourself from where you are that I'm going to come to Jesus. I want Jesus to be my Lord and personal Savior. I need my sins to be forgiven. And I turn from the ways of the world, my own way, and I turn to Jesus. Or I'm coming back to my fellowship with Jesus. And do whatever it takes. Drop everything and come on back to your fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ. You make that decision from wherever you are. If that covers you, I want to pray for you right now. Dear God, I just want to come in Jesus' name, and I do want to thank you for this opportunity we've had here today. Lord, I thank you for the blood of Jesus. I thank you for your Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for your word, dear Father. And I thank you for, for being able to praise you and worship you. Lord, I just ask that you would accept our praise, Lord, and purge anything from us that would hinder the flow of us sincerely uh, calling out to you and being used by you. Pray, Lord, that you would cover this family right now, dear Lord. I ask that you would strengthen us. I ask, Lord, that you will use us in the way you would have us to be used. We're submitted to you right now, Lord, and we thank you for all that you've done and all you're going to do. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 I'm happy to stand and uh, receive the benediction. Then after that, uh, the deacon's going to take charge uh, briefly. May have a couple of announcements, then we're ready to go from there. Amen. Amen. Let's look to the Lord. Now may the God of all comfort and grace establish your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus, both now and forevermore. Until we meet again, in Jesus' name, Jesus name. Amen. 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 Amen.